But instead of thinking like, well, you liked anatomy, you should take physiological sciences because that's what you liked and you're, you love that stuff. So I would be passionate about it. I would have been, I would have been engaged. I didn't take it. Um, and so right now, if you're, if you're in college, I would advise you to do something that you're passionate about. Whatever the major is, you can take all the pre-med requirements on the side, but do something that you're passionate about, something that you actually want to learn about. That is what I would encourage you to do. There is no, there is no cookie cutter way of getting into medical school. There isn't. If you want to succeed, if you want to be happy, do what you're passionate about. Figure out what that is. Explore a little bit. You have time. I wish someone told me that back then. I also tried to switch my major to Spanish and Portuguese. I remember I was going into the elevator as my parents were dropping me off. My hands full of, full of, uh, of my uh, laundry. And the elevator was closing. I timed it perfectly. Do you understand me? The elevator was closing. I said, bye, daddy. Uh, I'm going to change my major to Spanish and Portuguese. The way his hand just dived in and stopped the elevator from leaving. Hey! I was like, oh, I'm kidding. It was a joke. It was a joke. I would... No, Spanish and Portuguese. You know, we're just playing. I was just gisting you. Have more courage. It's your life. Have more courage. I didn't have the courage, so I didn't change my major. But um, going on from there, anyways, just how I ended up coming out of that. I ended up coming out of UCLA with a horrible GPA, horrible GPA, um, horrible self-esteem, full of self-doubt. My sister had graduated college by that time. And while I had tried to find mentorship, I guess I hadn't tried for hard enough. Um, I tried to find doctors that looked like me. There was few. The few that I emailed never emailed me back. Um, so when my sister came, she ended up finding or learning about the Association of Black Women Physicians um, that are based in LA. And she ended up meeting a mentor within um, UCLA's College of Human Medicine who was there at the time. And so she set up a meeting for me to go and meet with her. And that's when I was able to share the stress of, people don't really understand the stress of being an African American in medicine, an African American, or not even Af like African American because I'm speaking for myself, but a person of color in a space where you are the minority, there's a lot of stress that comes with it. There's a lot of, I mean, it's just like a mental space that it takes up when you're walking through campus and there's a tour going on and people stop you because they want to know what sport you play. Well, that might not be, that. Uh, that's just the first thing that just came to mind, but that's not actually the immediate stress. There's familial stress when your family has not done the system necessarily that you are now in and don't understand how to advise you or to help you. Um, there's a lot of like confounding factors that, that play into that, right? So finding support was huge. I didn't have that until the very end. And so once I found a mentor and an advisor that told me what I needed because at the end of the day my rap sheet in terms of like my resume of the things that I had done the things that I spent my time doing was I was in LA I was out there volunteering doing health fairs and like arranging them and mentoring students trying to tell them don't do what I did I've realized if this is something that if you love this major do it so I spent time telling people what not to do and I spent time in the community and it showed it showed that I was still dedicated to this path and I had to like even work through that because I used to think like, wait, did my parents incept me to do doc to become a doctor? Because I don't know if this is for me. Again, because I was taking all these classes that I didn't care about. And I had to really figure that out. Like, okay, God, I can, I can, I can tutor the heck out of somebody. And they're over here like encouraged and like, it's, well, it's lit. So maybe I'm supposed to be a teacher. Maybe I'm supposed to be a teacher, you know? And it took me until I met that advisor and shared my whole story to find someone that understood that I didn't even have to. I didn't even have to express my emotions. Just saying what the facts were of this, this like tumultuous journey of college. That she was like, "Oh man, okay, I understand that." And that's the story that I that I've heard from so many different students. I mean, yours is maybe a little. It's it's it's, it's different because it's your story. But I hear this, and this is what you're gonna have to do. So one, you're gonna have to go do a post back program so you can bring that GPA up, and you need to take classes that are actually applicable to med school. So like, all the classes that I took were all science classes, right? But taking like anatomy, immunology, all the things that actually have to do with the human body. Because once you get, she was saying, telling me that once you get back to that, maybe you'll find that flicker, that passion, that light that you felt that you used to have. You'll find it again, right? So I was like, bet, 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 post bet. All right. So I had applied. I had taken the GRE on the fly. Don't do that. I did all right, but don't do that. 
um, took the GRA on the fly before I graduated um, college. At this point, because of all my like community service involvement and all the projects and stuff that I did in the community, I knew about, I learned about public health that way by doing the work and asking like, what, what field covers this? Because what the heck is going on? What are these health disparities that I'm seeing? Why don't they have a freaking bus that goes through their their community so that they can get to their doctor's appointments? Why don't they have a, a grocery store? I've been driving around for 10 minutes, can't find a freaking grocery store to buy groceries so I can feed these kids healthy snacks um, during our event. Like, what what's happening? So once I learned, like, okay, public health deals with access, deals with transportation, deals with um, um, actual health disparities, how to change health behaviors, how to change people's thought process on, on taking ownership of their health, right? So public health kind of deals with a lot of those like fundamental themes. Um, and so once I learned about that, I was like, okay, um, I took the GRE. I only took it really because I was trying to go to Morehouse because I was like, I think I just need to be around black people and, and remember, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. But at the end of the day, I had been searching through public health master's programs while only applying to post because I was trying to get the heck out of California and the heck away from my loving parents that I love so much. Um, that Facebook and its cookies, USC started popping up on my thing. And I'm like, I went to UCLA. I'm a Bruin. USC is the Trojan mess on the other side of the city that I will not go to. And it kept popping up and I was like, okay, God, maybe you're telling me to apply to their master's program. I need to get my GPA all the way up. But I was like, okay. So I ended up applying to one MPH program and a bunch of post back programs, which are, it's a program where you go, you take a bunch of classes to boost your GPA up. So I applied to a bunch that were out of California. I didn't apply to not one in California. I got into zero. Zero post back programs. And the one master's program that I got into at a decent school, decent, they're great school. Um, that's what I. That's where I got in. I got into. I got into a master of public health program at USC. So my route did not go straight to medicine like I had planned. I think when I started college, I was like, "Bet I'm a graduate college. I started college at 17. I'm a graduate by the time I'm 21. I'm a graduate gra med school by 25. I'll be engaged by 23 to 25. I will. I will be in residency and have at least two or three kids because by the time I am 29, I must have two babies in my hands. You know what I'm saying? just so I can kiss them. None of those plans came <laughs> into fruition. God was like, no, we'll have another plan for you and it's better for you. And I'm gonna grow you in a way that you never thought that you could be grown before. That wasn't the right way I wanted to say that, but that's how it came out. Um, and I'm gonna mold you into this beautiful work of art that will only happen if you go through all of this mess. And so I ended up going to grad school and I had a lot of things that happened, a lot of fam family members that died, car accidents galore. My first solo-ish trip with my through grad school program to India was how I had to do it. Um, it was my practicum where I had to do like hands-on work and my, um, my focus in grad school was global health leadership. So um, that was my first trip to India, um, which kind of further ignited my already brewing love for travel, um, which we'll talk about later. And um, taking the MCAT, that's gonna be another video. I'm not gonna do it, it's too much to fit into this one. Um, took the MCAT a total of four times. We gonna talk about it, it's an interesting story. It really is, it's a page turner, because my life is a movie or something. Right, guy? I love you, kidding. Um, took the MCAT four times, okay? Uh, ended up finishing my master's in 2015 um, and then going straight into a post -bac program at Charles R. R. Drew University in Watts, California. Um, I think at that point I gave up trying to leave LA and I only applied to two that were in California in general. I think I realized like okay God the one thing I wanted to do was leave and you made me stay and now I'm closer to my sister my bond with my family is bigger and deeper than it ever was and I've understood and I am seeing the hurts that I have in my heart that need to be healed I'm seeing that if I had been gone when all of these things had happened 
when I have been able to handle it by myself somewhere else instead of being here with my family, both from my church family, my friends, and my family, my blood family. Um, so I ended up going to my post back program also in LA, but moved out the house for the year or so. It was great. And all that time I was working. So post college I was working. I was a, um, working as a freelance photographer. Another video. Stay tuned. Um, so finished my post back program. And I remember the first day of my post back program, I started with an anatomy class. It was the first class at like 8 a.m. And I remember sitting there just so focused, soaking it all up, finally being in the space, listening to something that I've been trying to be a part of for so long and knowing that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Knowing that this was the calling that I have placed on my life to become a physician. Knowing that all the things that I went through was so that I could tell someone else that their story isn't finished yet. That having a bad GPA in college isn't gonna be the end of it. That going through mess with your parents who do a lot of the times no best is it going to be the end of it? Um, and so I finished my my post back program. I did a year all A's. God is good, and he gave me a brain that I was using. Um, and then I applied to med school, and I got three interviews. To me, it wasn't shabby because we we gonna talk about this MK life. Um, and it took it was it was a long period of waiting before getting that first interview. Um, and so I'll do another video dedicated to like the interview process and everything um, and how I came to choose this school specifically um, out of the ones that I had. But that's the overall journey. It was long, it was windy, it was dramatic as heck. Um, but I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I think that I wouldn't be who I was now. I wouldn't have the empathy for those that have arduous paths, that ha that don't have the that didn't have the best of GPA, even if they brought it up. That they might not have started off well. The, the, the start might have been rocky, but I think there's beauty in the story if you're able to tell it. So I hope this video was helpful in some ways. I hope I stirred your minds to think of what kind of questions you might want to ask me. I did mention MCAT. I did mention applying. I did mention. Grad school, I can talk about grad school. Oh. And of course, I'm going to talk about travel and photography in a separate like intro video so you guys can just know more about me, so you know more about what you can ask me. And um, those question videos after this intro videos are going to be the seven minutes long ones. So I hope that was helpful. This is take one, and I'm not going to re-record it because I had fun. And I think it's raw and real in me. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you guys next week. Bye. Oh, to those of you that applied for the giveaway, y'all are lit. I'm gonna now go and look at everything. I think it's not five o'clock yet, but once it hits five, that's the deadline, that's the cutoff. Shout out to all of you guys that participated. I hope that those of you that do win and get the money that you guys are able to do something with it and that, um. Maybe we'll meet in the future and you'll tell me where your story went. I would love to hear it. All right. Bye, y'all.